Hello, once again, AP Calculus AB students. We're going to be taking a look at the very first section uh, that we uh, discuss when we introduce anti-differentiation, um, sometimes known as integration. And if you're using the Larson 9th edition textbook, this would be section 4.1. And the expectation would be that you've taken a good look at the various basic formulas of integration uh, as they kind of lead into example one in the notes that uh, you were distributed in class. So taking a look at example one, the directions are to find each of the following integrals. And our first one is the integration of three times x. And you'll notice that you have a constant of three. And as with many problems in calculus, whether they be limits or derivatives and even integration in this case, that three is a constant that can be simply placed out in front of the integral symbol. Now you may find out that as you become a lot uh, better at integration, you probably don't have to write that step down and you'll be able to do simple integrals like this in your head very, very quickly. And then the focus would be on what to do with the integration of the x. Well, if you follow the power rule formula that says you integrate x to the n by simply adding a power to that n, and then putting that same power in the denominator, you would simply come across x to the second all over 2. And that would be your integral form for the integration of x. Now you still have your 3 out in front, of course. And don't forget, you always have to put a plus c at the end of every indefinite integration problem. Now, you could do, choose to do a little simplification step and associate the 3 and the 2 in a fraction, as I've written. Makes it look a little cleaner. And that would be your final answer to this integral problem. Now, at the very beginning, if you ever have any doubts about whether or not these answers are correct, and let's say you don't have a, a CAS type of calculator sitting by that will do the integration for you, you could very quickly take a derivative. In fact, you could probably do that in your head. Take the derivative of 3 halves x squared. The 2 would come out in front, cancel with the 2 in the bottom, and you'd have 3x to the first. 3x to the first, and then you would take the derivative of any constant c, which would give you 0. So the result would be 3x, and that's exactly what you had at the very beginning of the problem with your integration. That was your integrand. Let's take a look at Example B, the integration of 1 over x cubed. Well, once again, just like with derivatives, this 1 over x cubed is not a very friendly form for calculus. So you're going to want to take a moment to rewrite it in such a way that you can integrate it. And that way would be to change it to x to the negative third power. Now you use the power rule once again. It says you would add 1 to the exponent. Now you need to be very careful because you are in negative number land here. And when you add 1 to negative 3, you would get negative 2. Put the negative 2 in the denominator as well, along with the plus c. And then you could choose to simplify this just a little bit by dropping the x to the negative 2 in the denominator alongside the 2. So we would have a 2x squared. A 1 would hold the position on top. And yes, this result would be negative, and it doesn't really make a difference if you put the negative in the top, the bottom, or out in front. Typically, it would either be in, out in front or on the top. And then, of course, don't forget your plus c. So there are your two solutions to numbers, example 1a and b. Now, if you look at example c, uh, it, it has a couple of other little steps here involved, the rewrite, integrate, simplify, which really isn't much different than what we did in part b. So the rewrite, the integration of the square root of x with respect to x. Well, your rewrite just simply asks that you change your exponent, or change your radical, I should say, to an exponent expression, x to the half. The integration requires that you add 1 to the exponent, so you'd have x to the 3 halves, and divide the denominator by that same exponent, which does bring about a rather sloppy looking fraction. It is an improper uh, uh, type of a, a fraction, which um, means that uh, we, we have a fraction inside of a fraction that we can reduce. 
and if we divide by the fraction 3 halves, that really is the same as multiplying by 2 thirds, and that's what we would need to do in the simplify step. Have a coefficient of 2 thirds with x to the 3 halves. Now, to put this all together as a final answer, I'll just choose to rewrite that one more time, but because this was an integration problem, I do need to add the plus c. So there's our result for part c. Part d, once again, asks for a rewrite. You'll notice here that you've got a cube root of x sort of factored out of the binomial x minus 4, and at this point, you really you don't have such a thing as, uh, say, the product rule for integration. Now, later on, if you study more calculus in Calc 2, there's a procedure that sort of addresses a product of two, two uh, items that uh, has a special technique that you can integrate. But we do not have to go there with this problem because it's very easy to go ahead and distribute the cube root of x inside, and it is very important that you do that. So we're going to go ahead, call this x to the one-third, and multiply it through. Maybe we'll think of this, okay, as x to the one-third. So what's x to the one-third times x? Well, that would be x to the four-thirds power. Distribute x to the one-third into the negative four, and you have negative four x to the third. Now it's time to integrate. Again, the power rule is used, where we will add one to the exponent, four-thirds plus one. Now that's a fraction, be careful. You would have x to the seven-thirds. Subtract. Remember that constant rule? The constant 4 will just come out in front. And then you'll integrate your x to the 1 third, which of course is x to the 4 thirds over 4 thirds. And yes, you can see that we've got quite a bit here to simplify. Not much to do with the x to the 7 thirds, but this other piece we can do a lot with. Take the 4 and rather than dividing it by 4 thirds, think about multiplying it by 3 fourths. 4 times 3 fourths would end up canceling the 4's, and you would just have a coefficient out in front of 3. And then your x to the 4 thirds follows suit. And you've got a pretty good simplified expression that would work for your final answer. So I'm just going to rewrite it, and then, as always, don't forget the plus c. Now we'll go to example one, part e. The integration of x plus one divided by the square root of x. Now we see in this particular situation that we have a monomial denominator, the square root of x. And as I've said to my students many, many times when dealing with uh, derivatives rather of monomial denominators, I would rather them not use the quotient rule. It's a lot easier to split this apart, divide, and, and then differentiate piece by piece. Well, with integration, the same rule applies, except for the fact that you really don't have much of another choice because there is no quotient rule, per se, with integration. So you're going to want to take this and split it apart into the integral of x over radical x plus 1 over radical x. And we'll take all of this integration integrand rather in consideration with respect to x. And then we'll simplify even a little more. We find out that, oh, x divided by the square root of x. Well, that's just nothing more than x to the first over x to the half, which is just x to the one half. And then one divided by the square root of x is x to the negative one half with respect to x. Okay, let's integrate x to the half, and we would get x to the 3 halves over 3 halves. Integrate x to the negative half, you would get x to the half over 1 half. And then when you go ahead and simplify by dividing by this fraction, you as in essence would multiply by its reciprocal doing the same over with this other fraction, you would be multiplying by a 2. And then since this is my final answer, I want to make sure that I remember to put the plus c in. So now I have the answer to example 1, part e. Now, I'm going to talk you through example 1, part f, uh, just with at least the preliminary step, and then uh, 
maybe request that you kind of try this a little bit on your own. Perhaps that has a little bit to do with the fact that I don't have a whole lot of room here left. But the key with a problem like this, you know, it's so easy to try to go inside and integrate the t squared and integrate the 1. But that's not going to work for you here because you've got this bigger problem to worry about with the square on the outside. And the best bet for you at this particular stage is to go ahead and multiply this binomial out. Expand the t squared plus 1 to the second power, which in this case would give us t to the fourth plus 2t squared plus 1 with respect to t. And then you would be able to take this integration piece by piece, and it actually becomes one of the easier integrations here in this example. In fact, maybe there is just a little bit of room here that I could finish this for you. t to the fifth over 5, or possibly 1 fifth t to the fifth, plus 2 t to the third over 3, or you could say 2 to the 2 over 3 times t to the third, plus your t, and then of course plus c. Now, like I said, if you run into problems where this exponent is much greater than a 2, like a third power, fourth power, fifth power, you're going to find out that, you know, not all calculus teachers are, are, are mean and cruel and are, are trying to, to make your life miserable because it becomes uh, just completely sort of unreasonable to expect a student to expand uh, these binomials with such large exponents. Now, that doesn't mean that down the road you won't encounter things like that, but you're probably going to notice that there's something else going on in the integral that's going to require a completely different technique. So this is your example one, your first uh, six real basic integration problems that I think will sort of open the door for you guys to do um, much more difficult ones later on.